recording which uh, we've just received off of eBay. And uh, that's it. There's no straps on it which we knew about. And uh, then we just a cross gap. And uh, we're just going to have a quick look over this now. So we'll give it a quick test and see what, uh, what we've got to do to it. And looking over it, um, yeah. now the seller told me there were some repairs to do to it. So we'll just try it and see what... Uh, well, the base note's stuck. So that's got to be done. Of course, just kick off with... Uh, Having a look at that base, what's sticking. Now the the reeds, he said he sent me a set of reeds here, so I'll have a look at those before we go any further. Now these are the reeds which have come out of another accordion. I hope, looking at <laughs> surely not. No, he couldn't have. He has. He stuck them all down onto the back of duct type, gaffer type. Unbelievable! This is going to tear all the. This is going to tear every one of the leathers off. There's no way I can unstick these. This is going to rip the leathers off. Oh my god! I'm going to have to re. Oh god! So for now, let's get into the base section and see what, um, what lies waiting for us here. Right, let's start by um, getting into this. I'll have to unscrew the uh, base strap. This is a 120 bass accordion. Just uh, four screws in this. Well, right, I'll just take out this last screw now. I'm going to have a look what's going on here. Well, we're going to have a look inside the um, pad side, so I'll just pull out these pins here. And sometimes Sometimes um, these pins are varying uh, in size. Some previous owners may have put um, different size pins in if they've gone a bit oversized the holes, you know. I'm just trying to check to see if perhaps. Um, The pads have uh, got stuck up. See that one there? There's, there's those two different sizes there, you see, in the back. So you must be mix them up. And that one's a long, you see. Yeah, that one there. That's longer and thinner. That's shorter. <laughs> so, I'm going to put these back in there. Anyway, we'll rip the base side off and see, uh, see what we can see. Fell off. Wonderful. Good. 
Let's get this treble side out of the way. Right, the seal is lifted off there. Someone's made a cardboard seal all the way around here, which was working all right. Mm. So I'm going to lift off these uh, this part here now. Let's remove these reed blocks and have a look in here. That uh, they're not marked already, so I'll just put a little mark on there and on there. So we'll get them in the right way around, and then we can take these out and see what's going on underneath here. And I can see a pad here. And uh, this air release button you can see where this goes on there's a that's the air, but air release and that just goes inside that little sting holder there like that but uh, we'll keep that out for now so we now just have to uh, locate this pad that's sticking up somewhere now the problem why one of the pads was open was because this, um, uh, let's look, which one was it? C, G, D, A, D, C, D, e sharp, uh, times B, F sharp. Now, it was on a diminished button. Oh, I forgot which one. <laughs> uh, what was happening was, I noticed that when I push these buttons down here, one of these, what would you call them, push lifting rods, um, was there's two coming out, and there should only be one. And I looked at these rods here, and the rod has latched itself behind that push little push peg there. Now, <coughs> I don't like moving these around because if you start moving these around, you, you get into a lot of trouble. You've got to be sure, sure that you you can see what you're doing. Anyway, so looking at this row here, I noticed that when we pushed in the diminished button, just one of these lifted out. But on this one, the underneath one lifted as well, and it was very stiff to push down. So I traced it back to here, and this rod here had latched itself around there. Now maybe this happened in transit while it was being uh, mo moved across uh, from from the way. Um, so I just carefully unlatched it, and it sprung back, and immediately the base buttons were fine. And I looked at the pads on the other side, and there was a pad which was not closing, and now. They're all closing just fine. So I'm going to reassemble it and give it a try. But I wouldn't advise you to go just, you know, cavalier at it, too, at it. You must, you've really got to study it before you move anything around on these. Because uh, some years ago, I thought that there was bent rods and I totally destroyed an accordion and I'll never do it again. So I'll reassemble it, starting with our little air button here. And this is full of cobwebs. Um, so this hasn't been looked at for some time. So we'll reassemble it and see how we go. Right, so we'll just start with uh, making sure the air button's in place. There it goes. And now I'll put our four screws back in. Right, that's the four screws back in. Let's put our base strap back in place. On this side here, onto the wheel. Tighten that up later. Now we need to put a. I'm going to have to put a new seal on this by the looks of it. This is pretty grim. It worked at the time for whomever did it. And remember, we've got that little mark there. So I'll put this block in here. Okay. 
ね。Remembering that uh, uh, normal solid ones into the front. Four of these go in here. I just want to, for today, see if we've managed to cure the problem of the sticking base note so let's have a try of this now and see what happens well that's uh, that's not sounding that yeah, it needs to tune enough for today we've done the bass for now so next job will be the tuning the uh, reeds well that's our kill cool lot from accordion cafe for today i hope that's been an interesting video bye for now <laughs>